OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. So, um, submitting materials to the EL Civics Exchange. What I have here is a PowerPoint that kind of takes through the basics. Um, and then I'll actually click on to the actual exchange page later, um, Karen, so you can see that too. Um, and also, besides the basics of submitting after this, I'll kind of take you through my thought process because I know I've talked to other civics people, other people who do civics curriculum as I do, and apprehension is kind of a part of it. You know, it's like my materials out there for the state. I don't know. So I can't, I'll kind of take you through that too, because I went through that. Well, I'm, am I still the only attendee? Yeah, you're it. So you got your own private session. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> Margaret. Yeah, but you know me and you know the exchange. <laughs> right. Anyway, oh. as for me, so I am the EL Civics Curriculum Writer for Santa Ana College School of Continuing Education. Um, I also work at Long Beach School for Adults, where I'm the evening lead um, for the evening ESL program, and I also teach there. Um, and there is my email, which you will see repeated later, and I'll put it in the chat as well. So you could, you're, feel free to contact me anytime. I, have, I never have a problem with that. All right, so I thought I'd start with the basics. What the hell, what the heck is the EL Civics Exchange, right? So the exchange was created by CASAS and OTAN to enable sharing of materials among institutions. Uh, there are so many co-ops. There's a lot of work that goes into this curriculum and making sure that our students learn these skills. Um, and we're all doing it separately. And it's like, why reinvent the wheel? Isn't having more brains better? So they created this central area where we can all put materials, get those materials, use them, adapt them, obviously with attribution, you know, because we do want to credit the people who made them. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So this was the idea. So the materials are divided into the seven content areas, just like the co-apps. So there's consumer economics, community resources, health, employment, government and law, transition, and workforce training. So those are the areas that you'll see on the site. Okay. And like I said, we'll be looking at the site later. Okay, so if you want to use the materials that are already there, you go to the exchange, you'll find the seven areas. Um, anything that says active materials, you just click on that to see what's available for what specific co-app. Because you know, they all have names like, all right, now I'm working on 13.6 and 47 point something, okay. You'll see all the numbered co-apps and you can download and use, okay? Again, attribution, okay? Licensing is built into, licensing and attribution is built into the materials. And in fact, it's one of the requirements to submit your own materials. Okay, so, which is great. You know, they're making sure that, you know, credit is given, so. Okay, so here's the kind of submitting material process if you want to submit. Um, on the instructionals homepage on the site, just below the welcome, there's basically a blue bar that says begin the submission process. Okay. You will need to create an account if you don't have one, but it's very easy. And you will see very detailed information and instructions, which I love because I work off of information. So giving me detailed instructions on exactly what I need to do and have is a wonderful thing. Okay. And if anybody has questions or you want me to slow down, let me know because I know I tend to be a fast talker if I'm not teaching. 
if I'm not teaching ESL, I should say. Um, I have a question. Go for it. Um, I assume that someone ha it has to be vetted. Your materials will be vetted. So if I send something and 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 I see we have Margaret, so like Casas is going to check and see if you're divulging too little or too much or. Yes, yes. And that's on one of my slides coming up as far as what the two places check for both Casas and OTAN. Yeah. Yeah, they will both vet the materials. But there is a, a rubric that you can follow under the resources area. Yes, very detailed rubric, and there's a link to it right in the site, which is great. You mean a rubric telling this would not be acceptable, don't put this? Mm -hmm. This is what we're looking for with materials. Yeah. Yeah. The positive side. <laughs> they give you the positive side. Okay, so you create the account and then look up your information. So these are the steps. And again, read that rubric, read the information and instructions first. There are links for the requirements. There's an example and what Margaret just mentioned, there's a rubric stating exactly what they're looking for. And it's very detailed, which is nice, but don't let the details scare you either. Because when we write materials for CASAS Collapse, we're following the CASAS rubric. So, okay, um, prepare your materials, obviously. Look at that CASAS rubric and remember the leveling because there are uh, five different levels, right? Beginning low, beginning high, intermediate low, intermediate high and advanced. So if you're submitting student materials, obviously they need to be leveled for that level VSO. Um, accessibility is key, okay? It's federal law. Anything going up online has to be accessible. Okay. More on that later. And on the uh, presentation that follows this, but I believe Margaret's a co-host for us. So. And then licensing. Licensing is a requirement, um, but pretty easy to do with Creative Commons. Again, if you want information on, on that, um, I have resources later in the slideshow. And CASAS and OTAN have lots of resources on this. <clears throat> so that's basically it. You get your account, you prep your materials, and submit. OK, so here's basics on the content. CASAS will be checking for content when they vet your materials. So follow those rubrics for the task and the level. Um, for student packets, make sure there are instructions for the students. Either that or make it, you know, or the actual lessons are obvious what the students are going to do. But I've always included directions on each page of my materials. Um, and here's the rubric. It's called the ELC Exchange Instructional Materials Rubric. The link is right in the Submit Materials page. So literally all you do is click the link. It'll download that rubric for you. And then you just follow the submission guidelines. Uh, they specifically state which document types they can take and the limit on size of the file. I didn't have any problem doing mine and my student packets can be, you know, 15, 20, 23 pages long. So I did not have any problem with that. Okay. All right. Any questions so far, Karen, before I go? Well, it just occurred to me that if I want to prepare something for my class, whether or not I want to submit it, that there's a rubric <laughs> available that's telling me how to fit it into the rubric. You know, that I, whether yeah, I submit yeah, it this... or not, if we're working on stuff, we could use this site to make sure we're following the protocol yeah yeah because it'll talk about you know accessibility guidelines content guidelines yeah and and one of the things i've always liked about classes rubrics for co-ops is they're very detailed but they don't block you in so much that you can't have little freedom 
you know, when they give examples, I love examples because I love having something to, to draw off of, you know, and get my brain started, but it'll say such as, you know, so even for like charts, it'll say such as name, location, et cetera. So it gives you that jumping off point, but you can also have the students look for other things when they're scanning for information and learning that skill. So. Sandra, I have a question here from your live audience. Um, I would like to know if when you submit these um, packets or, or instructional materials, does it go through a process through CASAS or does it just immediately appear in the bank of, at the exchange? No, it has to be vetted by both CASAS for content and OTAN for accessibility. Oh, okay, perfect. That's what and I you mean. actually, and they keep you notified of the process. So once my materials have been vetted for content, I got an email from CASAS saying, okay, you're, you're fine. We're passing it on to OTAN. And then after OTAN um, checked it, then I got an email from OTAN saying you've been vetted and then they appear. And they so do there it, is a process. They do it for you ultimately. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. And if you if need they, assistance, they we're you? happy to help. Sorry, go ahead. When you say they do it for you, meaning if you're missing something, they'll add it? No. <laughs> no, well, they will. Um, and again, I have, a, I have an example on the slide coming up, but they will actually send you an email saying you need to do revisions okay. with a link to, again, that rubric. And then there's a place for the reviewer's notes. So I assume, now that Portia and Margaret are both here, that they will actually put specific notes in here. Here's where you need to adjust your content or adjust your, or this is not, this is not accessible. Hi, Portia. Good morning. Just popped in for a little bit, Sandy. Hey. Yeah, that's right. Come on. That's, you're correct. Okay. Yeah, I actually sent an email to OTAN the other day saying, hey, what if, what if something needs to be adjusted because I got lucky and my stuff went through without <laughs> any revisions. So I got very lucky. Um, but I'm like, what if somebody needs revisions? You don't just reject it, right? And she's like, no, no, no. You'll get a thing saying, here's the revisions. Here's the notes. Just revise it and resubmit it. Yeah, we very much want materials. So we're going to help you. <laughs> we exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So those are the content basics. That's what CASAS will be that, vetting. Okay. Accessibility basics. Now I'm pretty good at accessibility, but I don't pretend to be the know-all expert of it. And again, there's a, there's a uh, workshop right after this one. Okay. On accessibility and making your documents accessible, which I will be at, believe me. <laughs> okay. So accessibility is the law. So these are just some of the basics. All your graphics need to have alt text. Okay. Tables. Be careful with tables. You have to have header rows. Uh, blank cells are no good because a screen reader, some screen readers cannot read blank cells. Okay, so I've gone, I've gone away from tables a lot. Um, I do use them for vocabulary because I don't have any blank cells. So uh, headings, headings, headings. Oh, so helpful. Okay. Um, color contrast. This is something you want to watch yourself because um, there are color contrast checkers, um, but they're not 100%. Um, so just make sure you know you don't have text that's so light or so similar to the background that it's not going to pass that color. Um, both Word and Adobe do have accessibility checkers, which I use constantly, um, and I use both. When I do a Word document, first I check that for accessibility. Then when I turn it into a PDF, then I do an accessibility check on that also. Because sometimes some things, for some reason, I have certain graphics. In fact, I was just updating my online communication. And for I have this one graphic that for some reason the alt text will not carry over into the PDF. So I have to re-alt text it every time. It's very strange. And it's just one picture. Everything else comes across. So those checkers are really, really nice. Excuse me, what is alt text? 
alternative text. Whenever you have a picture, you have to attach text to it so that a person who is visually impaired, their screen reader will read it. So if you have, if you have a picture of let's say the logo for Disneyland, although that's a no-no because that's copyright. But a picture, somebody who can see, will just say, oh, that's the logo for Disneyland. It says Disneyland and has Mickey Mouse. But a person who's visually impaired, unless there's text attached to it, their screen reader will not be, it'll just say image of and then nothing. So what you do is you attach text to it that says, logo of Disneyland saying Disneyland and a picture of Mickey Mouse or whatever it is. So then the screen reader will read that. Now, if you have graphics that are just for decoration to make it look pretty, you can actually mark that also. You just say decorative image and the screen reader will ignore it. Okay, we good? I have a question about, you said that the screen reader won't read a decorative image. As far as I know. Okay. So um, is that a key code word so that it won't scan it and read it for the person? Right. So Margaret Sandy. might be a better one to answer this. She knows more than I do. Anthony does too. No, uh, it, okay. it, it skips it. It skips it. Yeah, actually, okay. typically, what typically when you come to the alt text um, feature, it gives you the option to mark the graphic. So check a box as a decorative image, and then what the screen reader will do is because there's no alt text, it will just tell the person that the graphic is just decorative text. There's, you know, we don't, they don't. You can just basically skip over it. But it does indicate that it's decorative. Mm -hmm. So not that it's because if you don't if you don't put any alt text and don't check the box, then there's nothing there. Right. And so that yeah, so then the person won't know it, that there's won't, decorative. Yeah, text or well, they won't know that there's actually a graphic there. Okay. So it just states that there's a decorative image there, and that's it. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Good okay. to know. Hey, I learned something new in my own workshop. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. I always yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so licensing. This is this is part of the requirement. Okay. Uh, OTAN and CASAS requires that you have Creative Commons license on your material. Okay, this is to protect everybody, basically. Um, again, there's a link here in the presentation to Creative Commons. Um, they make it pretty easy just to pick a license. Um, this is actually a screenshot from what's at the bottom of, of my materials. And I just have links here. This links to my admin page at my school. I figured that was fair because they're the ones paying me to write the curriculum. And then the Creative Commons license. Okay. I also took the image of what kind of Creative Commons license I have. And I also, this, this is also linked to the license. So this, again, this is a requirement. Um, and again, I've got a resource slide on here that'll show you what to look at for these kind of things. Um, and I believe Penny Pearson is doing some da -da -da this weekend, right? She's the one who walked me through my first licensing, so. Yeah, she actually, she had a session um, yesterday, Sandy. Yeah, um, yesterday, I know I wanted to make it, but I was working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but we can, yeah, OTAN can, um, and cost us for that matter, but we can, we can help you, you know, walk you through the, mm -hmm. the licensing piece of it, you know, to make sure you understand. I mean, one thing that's important about this particular license, because there, there are many licenses that are out there, right? So, but we chose this one in particular um, for a few things. One is that um, according to this license, so basically what it says is that all of these EL Civics materials can't be used for commercial purposes, right? So you can't go out on the street and sell your EL Civics materials 
or teachers pay teachers or anything like that. So everything is non-commercial between agencies or from agency to agency. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> another important feature of this license is that um, this license basically allows the next agency to adapt your original civics materials in the way that they see fit. You know, how are they going to, they, they might want to tweak it a bit for their agency, you know, for, for sure, for example, like they'll want to change like the name, right? So where, you know, instead of Mount Sac, it's for Mount Diablo, right? And, you know, sometimes um, we all, you know, as we all develop these materials, civics materials, sometimes they tend to be sort of localized, right, to our San Diego area or the LA area or the San Francisco area, wherever. So there may be some of those geographic references that we would want to change for our location in the state. Um, but this license will let you do that, right? So it's not like it's not like you just take the materials and you have to use them as is, right? You can adapt them for however you see fit, you know, for your local area, um, you know, references to local businesses or organizations or whatever. Um, um, and maybe you don't want to use everything that's in a in a packet. Like maybe you just want to use like um, pieces of it or modules of it or something like that. So that's what this license allows you to do is you can adapt it as you see fit. Um, the one other thing about this license though is that you do have to give credit to the original agency, right? Mm -hmm. So if I work at Mount Diablo, but I'm using these Mount SAC materials that I want to put somewhere that on, on the Mount Diablo materials, that these materials originally came from Mount SAC. So we're giving credit to the creator of the original materials. So all of that is sort of baked into that license there. And that's why um, between CASAS and OTAN, when we have those discussions, we wanted to make sure that we were uh, we provided a license that gave everybody these sort of freedoms to do with the materials as they as they see fit, but within certain limitations, right? So don't don't sell them or um, use them for commercial purposes or anything like that. Exactly. So, yeah, it's a it's a nice sort of compact graphic, a nice compact license that kind of packs a lot of punch. So that's <laughs> that's what we're aiming for here. Yeah. Yeah, and the and the and the particular materials that I put on the exchange actually have notes on there because I adapted a couple of things from my other job. And so I actually put that right on the page, you know, adapted with permission from da da da. Okay. So anyway, so yeah, so this will give, you know, this you just attribute somebody else adapted from. And then like Anthony said, you can tweak it anyway, which is great because like some of the some of the co-ops have like a resource guide. And I actually use real places in the community that the students could go to if they need help with certain things. And so obviously that would be a page that you'd want to change and make it specific to your community. So, you know, that being able to adapt materials is huge, huge. You know, I mean, I adapt stuff. I kind of update stuff almost every year, depending on, you know, what's needed. Like I'm going in and adapting online communication right now because I have a couple of COVID specific issues in that. And since we've lost that, since we're not doing tables six feet apart in restaurants anymore, obviously I'm going to be adapting that. So even your own stuff, you know, you adapt from your ears. So. so that's the basic on, yeah, Creative Commons. It's pretty easy to do. Okay, so after you submit, so here's the, here's Karen, what you and I were talking about. So CASAS will review your material for content and levels. And again, the, they have that rubric that you can look at. And Margaret also uploaded it in the chat if you'd like it right now. Um, then it goes to OTAN for accessibility. If your materials need changes, then you'll actually get a message from either CASAS or OTAN saying, your materials need revisions. Here are the notes that the reviewer puts on what revisions you need. And then you just make those edits or changes and then you resubmit it. So they will get you through every step of the process. We have another participant. Hey. No worries. 
I'm on mute. I have to shoot me an email so I can get you the PowerPoint. Okay. So and this is, yeah, so this is what happens after you submit. The recordings oh. and everything will be online, right? The recordings and the links that are shared. We'll work on making those available. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, I actually have this on a, um, I actually uh, uploaded this to Google as well. So this is also a Google slide, so I can give anybody who needs the link. I've already uh, checked that. Okay, so here's the um, here's the me part, the uh, what I went through part. Okay, because I was very apprehensive about putting my materials on a statewide site where everybody would see them and judge them. That's so these this was kind of part of my process. Is my stuff good enough? What if it's really not very good? Okay. Will I be judged if you know they find errors or accessibility problems or you know? Um, what will Casas and OTAN think? I mean, these are the experts, and I'm just, you know, a little curriculum writer. So and then are the requirements too much? Is this going to be like way too much? And I can't, you know, I'll freak out. Okay. So this is this is what I went through, and this is what I'm trying to get out. This is one of the important messages that I'm trying to get out there to other civics writers. Is um, here's what I discovered. Casas and OTAN are absolutely thrilled to have submitted materials. They will help you with whatever you need. Okay, if you have questions, ask. They're going to help. They want this exchange to really be full and robust and something we can all share. And, you know, us sharing and adapting and brainstorming, things just get better. Right? All this stuff just gets better with more brains and more materials and more stuff out there and more resources. Okay. Um, Depending on the institution, I don't know if you have a specific curriculum writer, if teachers are doing some of their own curriculum, but we're limited on time. You know, I mean, I'm a curriculum writer, but I'm part time. So, and you know, to get good materials, it takes some work and some hours. Okay, especially now that we're a lot of us, I write materials for in person and hybrid and remote online and Zoom classes. So, you know, everything has to be accessible. I have to have assessments that work for in-person classes, assessments that work for uh, remote assessments where they're done, you know, face-to-face -face online. Um, so all of that takes a lot of time. So I think the more that we can share materials, um, of course, most of us, like Anthony said, are gonna do some adaptations, right? But to have, the basic materials there where the bulk of that work is done and that you only have to adapt rather than write completely from scratch is just a huge help. And frankly, like I said, getting ideas from people who look at things differently. I love brainstorming with other teachers. In fact, we used to have communities of practice at my school where I would go in and take the le lessons I was working on and pass them out to the teachers who were teaching those levels and get feedback. And it was extremely helpful getting feedback from other people, you know, other people looking at my materials and saying, hey, have you thought about this or what about this? Love it. Absolutely love it. I, I like the idea of that a lot of people are looking at stuff and that, that it's an exchange because I use, I'm teaching online, I use online materials that show up with mistakes in them that should be highly vetted. And, and I'm like, I'm using something called Edmentum, but it's got mistakes mm -hmm. that it's used in the GD program. And I'm like, who's catching these mistakes? And um, so in a pre presentation yesterday, 
a, rec a website was recommended and the example from the website had a mistake in the grammar that I was like, is anyone going to talk about what's right in front of us on the screen? And nobody did. So, uh, wow. You know, the idea that someone's looking and if I did something that's questionable, somebody say, what did you mean here? Yeah, yeah, no. And it's a it's a great idea. In fact, um, my materials, I think it was a couple of months after I submitted them and um, Margaret had gotten a question from an instructor in their school saying, first of all, I love your materials, but what about this on page, you know, 13 or something? Um, and I was, I was freaking out because I was like, oh my God, I made a mistake and I turned him into the exchange and then, and then I looked at it and I went and I wrote Margaret back and I said, no, actually that was on purpose because the student was supposed to answer, no, it's not correct. <laughs> <laughs> but it scared the heck out of me. You know how it is, you know, you put something up, like I put stuff on our employee internet and then you find one typo, right? But yeah, I totally agree with you on the whole grammar thing that I'm a grammar nerd. So when I see those grammar mistakes on authentic materials, it's like, you you know, if you teach online, like I love the idea of using YouTube videos, like Canvas or, you know, for that different kind of thing. But you got to vet that whole video to the end, word by word. Because, you know, I've gone through videos where, you know, like the last 20 seconds, there's, there's this huge mistake. And I'm like, okay, well, I can't use that. <laughs> Hey, Sandy. Hey. One little comment. Sometimes when you have a document that's not accessible and you work on it to make accessible, you don't catch every formatting change. So like I'll have looked at the document five times, I go back and then there's not a space between words in certain places because the formatting changed. Mm. So, you know, and that's the good thing about the materials is they're all um, editable. So when you yeah. find those things, if you're using them, you got a great gift. It's not too hard to just go out, go in and make those little corrections. Yeah, yeah. And I always, um, Rita Van Dyke Cow, who you probably know over at SEC, our sister school, um, she proofreads for me. And even, and I mean, she is one of the best proofreaders I have ever seen in my life. She's like, there's a comma missing on page 13 between word seven and word eight. You know, I mean, that's how precise she is. But even she misses stuff sometimes. You know, we are humans. You know, there's going to be that occasional typo. Um, but yeah, I don't think anybody's going to be up in arms over the over that. Karen, it's good to know that you can submit in Word, PowerPoint, or PDF, whatever is easiest for you. Okay. Yeah, I've always I've always done um. I don't know, what did I, did I submit in Word or PDF? Probably Word so people could edit, but. Yeah, yeah. that's the easiest. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Portia will tell us next session. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, you know, and Word having that accessibility checker that it might not be perfect, but it's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good, it catches a lot, so yeah. Well, and I'm like you, Sandy, you know, I'm not an expert in this, but I can get documents to pass accessibility. There may be better ways of doing things and I am going to learn them. But for now, I can get them to pass the accessibility check. Sandra, yeah. you might show her under the review button on tab where accessibility checker is, like in PowerPoint right here. I think you were reading my mind, Margaret. That was my <laughs> next question. <laughs> you know how to do that under review? Hold on. I usually go. Oh, oh you go a different way. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, I go. It's very you easy. You go to the review tab. Okay. And check accessibility over on the left. Okay. Are you watching this, Karen? Can uh -huh. you see this? Okay. Right. Yeah. Same, so same thing in tab. Word. You go to review. And, and then see where it says check accessibility? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Wow, it's built in now. Oh, I'm missing alt text on what? Yeah. <laughs> See? Oh, good Lord. Okay, well, that's just because I didn't put a subtitle there. Hello. Okay. Part of the. Uh, the oh, board. I forgot my alt text on my picture. Really? <laughs> so show her how to do that. That's that's okay. really easy. Just show her how to do that. Super All right. Easy. So I right clicked on my picture, and here mm -hmm. it says edit alt text. Mm -hmm. And then here we go. 
So now when a when a screen reader gets to this, you don't have to say picture of the screen reader automatically does that. So it'll say image of Sandra Watts head and shoulders. Smiling. Okay. Uh, does, it, does it show With sunglasses for, on her head? Okay. <laughs> does it show for everyone or only for the person? It just comes out with the screen readers. Yeah. Because so, I have seen things where it where I it says picture of dog, and you're thinking, I knew that was a picture of a dog. <laughs> I've noticed sometimes sometimes when you um I think you hover over the picture, right? Let's just take that out. Essentially, that's a title. Okay. Um, so you, yes, there are a couple of features, right? So when you're scroll, yeah, if you bring your cursor um, over the graphic, if yeah. the person has added a title, then um, which is separate from the alt text, then that's sort of a shorthand um, uh, title <laughs> name a, of a name. caption. A caption, yeah. Well, it's not quite, no, because a caption is actually what will show up either above or below the graphic. Oh, that's right. But the title is when you scroll your mouse or scroll your cursor over and it lands over the graphic, then you'll get a title. Yeah. So that, I mean, it's not, you can do that. It's, you don't have to do that. But um, sometimes just, you know, even for, just for, um, even those of us who don't have visual impairments, it's kind of nice to just see, like, you know, what's the name of this thing or whatever. So, yes. yeah. And you can always check it. And here's the when you have the alt text open, you see this little box down here where it says Mark is decorative. Right. And if you hover over it, it'll it'll tell you about what is Mark is decorative. Yes. So if I just mark this as decorative, then see the alt text goes away and the screen reader will just skip it. Okay, that's the check mark there. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. it's a box of some sort. Yeah. yeah, you just check the little mark as decorative. So that's the creator's decision as to whether or not that information is of importance or if it's just there to make the... Um... Yeah, like on my title pages for each task, I put a picture because it's pretty. But like when I do vocabulary, obviously I want those images to be alt texted because that's the vocabulary. <laughs> yeah. So... Good point. But you're saying that when you what you just put in is only viewable by the person who needs the help. Yes, yes. Everybody else will just be looking at the picture. But if a if a visually impaired person has a screen reader on, that it will describe the picture. It, you know, it'll say the alt text that I put. It'll say image of and then read the alt text. And Sassy, is that picture in line with text? Oh, that. probably not. I had a question about the screen reader. Where That's is that located? Kind of yeah. is it... Well, screen readers are, I don't have a screen reader personally. Okay. Yeah, people people who have screen readers put them on the computer. It's like a software? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's listed like an app. Yeah, and actually on, <clears throat> on the OTAN website, we do have a few recommendations for screen readers. Um, there's a very popular one, NVDA. And actually, we sometimes we recommend for people just you know put it on your machine, put it on your on your device, and just practice with it. And see, so then you get the experience of what somebody who needs a screen reader, um, what they're relying on to you know work through your materials, right? So not only the not only the graphics, but also the text, and then it gets into reading order. So you want, you know, typically we all we basically all know how we read, right? We start at the top, mm -hmm. left to right, top to bottom. So um, when you're designing your materials, that's also an important consideration as well, because you don't want the person jumping all over the page. Like you basically want the, you want the person to be able to work through the material in the order that we typically work through the material. So, yeah. You know, I've just discovered how the heck do I put this picture in line? I think you don't have to because your text is um, in that other section. Okay. It, it well, I'm just, I'm just realizing that when I click on the picture in Word, you know, it gives me the option of putting it in line or wherever. This is not. 
It would give you an error message. I, it was really, I okay. just made the comment so you could comment on in line with that. Okay, okay. Sorry about that. Portia's just going to hassle me just a little bit. Okay, no. <laughs> well, I hope you'll do the same for me. There you go. <laughs> oh. Okay. I actually, well, well, I don't know. This is fascinating. And I got my own workshop. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> with yeah. some interaction. And you've, got, and you've got four experts sitting in the room, you know? Mm -hmm. I did notice that. I didn't count myself. <laughs> For uh, blind leading the blind. Wait, um, so because are we done in 10 minutes? By my what by my clock, we oh have yeah. Let me get through this. Okay, so this is by the way, um, Karen, I did put this whole PowerPoint in the chat if you want to yeah, get it from I there. Took it. I or took I'll put it. my email back up again also, so you can do that. Um, but these are all links. This is to the EL Civics page. This is to OTAN. Here's Penny Pearson's OTAN page um, because she's got videos, trainings on accessibility and on licensing. Both. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to Creative Commons, there's a share your work page, which will take you through the licensing thing. You can get the little logos, which is the picture of the license like this that I showed you. Oops. Didn't mean to move that. Um, so you can actually get those logos and like link to it. Um, and there's Get Savvy. They have a whole tutorial on license. Okay. And have you ever seen Open Attribution Builder? No. Okay. This is, I actually have it open on my thing here because I use it a lot. Can you see this? I see, I see your PowerPoint. Oh, you still see my PowerPoint? Oh, Lord, I got to stop there. But you know what I'm really interested in is how I could use the stuff because our stuff is so old. Oh, okay. Okay, well, let me get you over to the site then. So this yeah, is, I mean, this is just an open, to at, uh, this open attribution builder is just really handy to like make the attribution links for you. Um, so, like I said, there's a link to that in my PowerPoint. So, if you got the PowerPoint, you're good there. If I get right, that. Let far, me go to the actual I'm slide. Talking to you. <laughs> let me go to the actual site. Okay. Now, let me share. Okay. So here we are at the California EL Civics Exchange. Okay. There are links to this on both the OTAN site and the CASA site. Okay, and also in my PowerPoint, I put a link in there. Okay, so this is the main, the home page for the exchange. Okay, so here are the materials that are already in the exchange. So let's say you're looking for employment materials right here. Can you see where it says three active materials? Mm -hmm. If you click on that, it will tell you, okay, so for COAP 32, nothing. For COAP 33, there are two materials available. So you can click on that and see what's available. So there's something from Mount Diablo and something from El Monte Rosemead. What is COAP, what do those numbers mean, 33? The numbers are, um, are which content area it is. So 33 is employment. 33.2 has specific tasks attached to it. Because right. I'm used to seeing the things that are like 4.2.1. That's what I'm used to. I've never seen one with. Oh, anything. those are the those are the descriptors for the skills. The CASA's competencies. The CASA's competencies. Yeah. These numbers are for the civics lessons. So by the time they, I'm a teacher. So by the time they reach me, maybe that's been removed. That's up to your school. I mean, I've always used the co-op numbers on my materials, so everybody knows exactly what we're doing and, and to keep them straight because I write a lot of material. Um, Karen, so um, is who's is Innocencia, who's your- Kristen. You know, who? Kristen Pursley is our civics person. Oh, okay. So Kristen is a good person. You know, Kristen may be the person who would kind of start here and take a look at the materials and then you know work with all of you back at at um west contra costa to 
to kind of, you know, how are you, how are you going to further develop these materials for your, when you all do the civic objectives at your school? Um, because again, if you're going to borrow like from El Monte Rosemead, which is down in Southern California, you may need to do some adjustment for, you know, for the Bay Area or for West Contra Costa. So um, that's what, you know, when we were talking about earlier about adapting the materials, um, these are just here to sort of review and you can you can download them and then use them as you wish. Um, but um, first we need to get you to this place where, as Sandy is showing us, where you're able to actually access the materials. Right. Well, the one that we're, we're struggling with is the, this right now is um, environment and disaster prep, which I don't see there. So that's probably a different- Yeah, you'll have to, yeah, you'll have to look at uh, community resources, right? Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. Number 11, or- um, Oh, There's please. emergency services. 16 is emergency assistance. Yeah. Emergency assistance. Yeah. There's there's different ones. Um, I actually wrote materials on uh, the disaster one. So but these are much more. They're not like by the bigger. They're they're more detailed. It looks like. Um. More broken yeah, down. So I mean. Under under community, there's a lot of things under community resources, a lot of different things, you know, family resources, DMV resources, uh, online resources, um, emergency resources, education is under here. Um, online communication, this is this is my materials right here. Um, Submissions, I see there's zero. Yeah, right. So that's that's one of the things is that we're you know we're trying to encourage more agencies. Well, we're, we're, we kind of have two two things. So one is that we do, you know, across the board, we want agencies to turn in their materials, right? But we also know that, you know, across the state, that many agencies tend to sort of gravitate to specific co-ops, right? The employment ones, yeah. um, the the education, the school ones, um, visit, you know, a, a, a Visiting the doctor, medical appointments, all that kind of stuff. So we are also asking agencies that if you have the um, materials for the for the co-ops that are used a lot, kind of turn those ones in first because we know that a lot of folks would it would benefit a lot of agencies because everybody is sort of focusing on those co-ops. Yeah. Yeah. So. Our student needs assessment every year. We, um, you know, there are there are specific areas, content areas that get a lot of votes every single time. Yeah, right. You know, just that's yeah. what the students want. So, yeah, you know. exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. for example, the one on schools, but we have something that's on schools. Yeah, that's and that point. was recently re revamped by a, a person who's an ESL adult teacher and a K 12 teacher, and his wife is a K 12 teacher. Oh, nice. So they they were recently redone. So that would be a good one for you know me to cr suggest Kristen. Maybe we should um, submit that because it's yeah. it's new new material. Yeah, yeah, I mean you know we really want to encourage people, and like I said, that's the reason a big part. The reason part of my PowerPoint was the fact that. I went through a lot of apprehension, you know, it's like, am I going to be judged on the materials? Um, and basically the reaction I got was, thank you. And we appreciate it. Do you have any questions? And we're here to help you. So um, that was very reassuring. <laughs> so. Sandy, is it a mix of 231 and um, 243? um co-ops in there yeah you will yes all the co-ops are in there so you would have to look up um which one it is yeah. yeah and most agencies actually choose their co-ops so agencies looking for let's say 32 33 they would know that's under employment and they would look under employment you know and see if there's anything under 33 yeah, yeah so they know um and those of us who work with civics a lot, we have a lot of these numbers memorized. <laughs> so yeah, we would definitely know like where to look for. 
Oh, by the way, my my in-person participant, can I say hi and can I get your name? Oh, Maria. Maria. Hi, Rose. Maria. Nice to see you. I'm from Del Monte, Rosemead. Oh, okay. So you're a contributor. Well, not me personally, but I know who is. <laughs> well, there you go. I encourage them to share more. Lori asks me every two or three months. Lori says, when are you putting more up on the exchange? So. Yeah, we have some good stuff. Uh, we had a TOSA that was, um, you know, that's her job is to create these materials and she's done a fabulous job. So. Yeah, that's me. I'm I'm just an ELSA curriculum writer for Santa Ana right now. So that's pretty much what I do all the time. And a lot of our stuff a few years ago was really like out of date. We didn't have that much. So I've really been trying to get more stuff. So we need and more I from you guys. I will, pardon? <laughs> We need more from you, Santa. I know. And I, I <laughs> promise I will. The problem is with my schedule, I have to do this on my own time. Right, right. Because my boss is going to be like, um, you're doing stuff for CASAs and not us. Uh, um, so it's for the summer, state. It's for the state. It's not for. Well, I know. It, well, I know for the state, but still, they're paying me to do it for them. So, you know. From we owe a $2 which is so yeah yeah so um you know i keep telling them hey you know santa Ana college gets kudos for this that's but right during the summer i have a much lighter schedule so that's one of my plans is uh getting some of this stuff prepped okay starting in june so well karen you're you're welcome to come to our presentation that follows this if you want to learn more what's the presentation that follows this uh, making materials accessible Oh, okay. Well, let me yeah. see what I have checked on my schedule. I mean, I have to say that starting with uh, engaging back and forth mm -hmm. for my 8.40 in the morning on a Saturday was really good because my brain was just overloaded yesterday. Yeah, it can be overwhelming. Yeah. You know, that's the only thing that when I came out at the end of the day yesterday, I remembered because <laughs> I used to go in, uh, in person and they're just, we need little brain breaks or, or you know, or yeah. five minute meditations before, <laughs> uh, five minute yoga, actually in the schedule, they need like 10 minutes of yoga together before the next event because uh, it, I went to every single thing yes I mean every single session yesterday and then oh, I, I would have loved to do that but I was working yeah I was working my I brain had to off. recuperate afterwards really Thank you. all right um just last thing so here's my email again um if anybody wants it or wants to write it you know shoot me an email anytime I mean even if you're interested in brainstorming okay I'm always looking for that um, and Margaret, Margaret, Lori, I think Anthony, Neda, they all have my email. So you can always contact them too and say, what was Sandy's email? <laughs> and you're in Santa Ana? I'm in Santa Ana and Long Beach. For civics, I'm Santa Ana. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Very good information. Yeah, it was great information. Thank you. Thank you.